And thanks for staying with us on Morning Live. Now, members of the Judicial Service Commission, or the JSC, are meeting this week to apply their minds following the findings of the Judicial Conduct Tribunal against Western Cape Judge President John Clope. The tribunal found Clope guilty of gross misconduct, uh, saying that there was clear evidence of wrongdoing when Clope attempted to influence two constitutional court judges in a matter relating to former President Jacob Zuma. And this 13-year-old case has been one of the criticisms leveled against the JSE's inability to resolutely attend to complaints laid against judges. Uh, Advocate Glennis Greitenbach is a member of the JSC as well as a Democratic Alliance Member of Parliament and also joining us for the discussion is um, Begezeli Benjamin and he's a research and advocacy officer from Judges Matter. Uh, thanks so much uh, to both of you for speaking to us this morning and welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Thank you, Sakina. Um, Advocate Breitenbach, let me start with you. Uh, the JSC has been accused of allowing cases to drag on, and most notably this uh, case involving um, uh, Judge uh, John Thorpe. Now, as a member of the JSC, what has been some of the reasons for the Thorpe matter to drag on for this long? Well, um, you know, it's, it's not quite as simple as it sounds, although the, the length of time that it's taken is unacceptably long, and uh, there can be no rational excuse for it. Um, however, it's like any litigation proceedings, really, and a lot of the delays have been um, caused uh, by the, uh, by the um, actions of, of Judge President Schlope. So he had, for instance, legal representation from abroad. Availability was an issue. Uh, fees became an issue. Uh, there, there were many, many things, but, uh, but the time period is too long. I must just point out that the Judicial Services Commission doesn't deal with the disciplinary matters per se. Uh, a subcommittee, the Judicial Conduct Tribunal, deals with them. So it's not the full JSC that sits on, judicial, uh, on disciplinary matters. Mm. Uh, what sort of uh, intervention can or should be made by the JSC in matters such as these where it does find that something, a matter, a, ca a case is dragging on too long? Because if you think about it, 13 years in the making, um, it doesn't matter how you try to paint this one, it, it, it really, uh, really boggles the mind, Advocate Breitenbach. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, certainly, I, uh, I'm not trying to paint it at all, and uh, fortunately, um, my tenure on the JSC started only very recently. But, uh, but, but nevertheless, it is it is a uh, it is a unreasonably long period of time. Uh, in my view, the matter should have been dealt with much more expeditiously. Um, of course, there are systemic delays that that cause cause delays, and we all understand that due process, the rule of law, the access to representation, all of that is is important. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, Judge President Schlope was a very serious um, member of the judiciary, a very high-ranking member of the judiciary, and the fact that it took so long has certainly not um, enhanced the reputation of the ability of the JSC to deal with matters uh, that I must concede. Begazeli, let me bring you in. Um, your advocacy group, uh, Judges Matter, um, is dedicated um, uh, to interest in the activities of um, org organs such as the JSC um, and South Africa's judiciary in general. What has been your role in this particular matter in terms of agitating for a, a resolution? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Sakina, and uh, good morning to the uh, uh, morning live viewers. What Judges Matter has done um, and what Judges Matter uh, does is to focus on the, the, the judiciary um, in terms of how uh, judges are, are disciplined for misconduct. So we look at the system as a whole and look at the key points at which um, are likely to, to, to cause uh, problems. Um, and as uh, Glynis says, um, the, the, this particular complaint has taken quite a, a long time to resolve. Part of it has been because some of the parties have taken uh, the matter to court, but a big part of it was that there were no rules in the past that governed um, how the, the judiciary um, disciplined members. So there wasn't a strict 
uh, complaints process, and that only came in 2010. And when it came, it was still subject to litigation, and only only now is it really taking foot, and which is why we see um, uh, bodies like the Judicial Conduct Tribunal and the Judicial Conduct Committee that sits and, and, and decides cases against judges. That being said, though, it is still uh, largely in the court of the JSC in terms of how matters uh, should run. And we think that there are s systematic reforms that can be put in place to try and address those. For example, there are just too many layers in the system. The system is far too complicated. So you go from the conduct committee to the conduct tribunal, and then to the commission, and then back again. So those kinds of things should be should be resolved in terms of the conduct system and should be a lot more streamlined so that it, it can move a lot faster than it or, than it has uh, so far. So Mbegizeli, there is of course a view that uh, now that there is a finding against uh, Judge Lope, uh, he should be suspended. In your view, is that a sound objective, uh, a sound objective view, considering that the final outcome, as I understand it, still lies with the JSC? Yeah, I, I think the decision largely lays with the JSC. But it, if we look at the at, at the past practice, uh, particularly the uh, two cases that uh, um, of suspension that happened last year, the case of Judge Mushtaq Parker of the Western Cape and Judge Nanama Kubela of Gauteng, they are subject to disciplinary uh, proceedings. They've been referred to the to the conduct tribunal, and both of them were placed on suspension. So if we we, we, we treat, treating uh, like cases alike then it, it just it makes sense that a judge Lopez would be also placed on suspension um it's it, 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 it's also in terms of um there, there's now been a finding which is quite different from the other cases where there hasn't been a finding so this this case is, has, has advanced a lot further and and the suspension it, it, it makes sense not only for um the 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 High Court, the Western Cape High Court itself, but also to allow Judge Lope to properly um, uh, manage the case. Um, he obviously has uh, competent lawyers on board who can help him, but he needs now to devote a lot more attention to it. And so him being um, sort of temporarily relieved of some of his responsibilities would make sense. And how does that work, Advocate uh, Breitenbach, um, if uh, Judge Slope takes this matter on review? How would the suspension then take effect? Well, the, the suspension um, is, is put in place by the President uh, on the recommendation of the Judicial Services Commission. So um, yesterday we briefly uh, discussed the matter, of course, uh, and um, there's a, this, what we call the smaller JSE meets to to discuss this issue, uh, the politicians withdraw from this discussion, the politicians that serve on the JSC, simply because uh, if and when it comes to the National Assembly, um, we would de then have to participate in that debate and, and also vote. So it would be improper to, um, to involve ourselves in the process at this point. Uh, so we have the politicians have withdrawn from that process. Um, there will be a discussion on... Uh, on taking the matter forward, when it will be dealt with, when it will be discussed by the JSC, um, and also the the, uh, the move for a suspension. Um, the JSC must then make discuss it, make a recommendation to President Ramaphosa, who who will then either place uh, Judge President Schlopper on suspension or not. Um, I agree uh, with Mr. Benjamin that, um, that, uh, that the matter is, is urgent, that there's a, a strong precedent for suspension. Uh, and in my view, uh, the suspension should be recommended uh, forthwith and I see no reason why it shouldn't be implemented. Um, so it can, it can be a long procedure. Uh, it, it, I, I don't believe that it has to be. And I sincerely hope that um, given the public interest in the matter, given the importance of the matter, given the position that uh, Judge President Schlope holds, given that he's already been convicted, um, that suspension will follow. It, it, it is the logical next step. Mm. So this has already taken 13 years, and uh, given the recourse that is available to Judge Schlope, how long do you anticipate that could possibly take, Advocate Breitenbach? Well, it's, it's difficult to say because I I, 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 I I don't speak, I'm not mandated to speak on behalf of the JSC. Uh, my personal view is that the JSC is sitting now for two weeks. 
uh, we're due to sit for the rest of this week and the entire of next week. Um, that should be sufficient notice period for anybody to make uh, representations about uh, suspension and certainly enough time to give notice in my view. Uh, and I would hope that that would be the course that, that the JC will follow, that they will give notice of their intention to discuss this matter, that they would gather the representations of the concerned parties and, uh, and make a recommendation, a decision on a recommendation at least by the end of next week. Uh, Freedom Under Law has uh, written to the JSC requesting that we consider that, so I sincerely hope that that is what will happen. There, there, uh, there can no longer be room for um, prevarication and delays. Mm. And um, the JSC obviously expected to come up with a final outcome, but in doing so, Advocate Breitenbach, is there room to stray from the current judgment by the tribunal and determine otherwise? In, is there any sort of room for maneuverability there? Well, the judgment of the tribunal is, uh, again, in my view, with respect, uh, a very good and detailed one. It uh, deals with the issues, I think, in, in some, uh, some detail, very thorough. And uh, no, there's no, there's no possibility of straying from that judgment. You work within the four corners of the of the papers. Uh, that being said, um, uh, certainly Judge President Schlopper would be entitled to make representations about why he shouldn't be suspended and the JSC will be uh, obliged to consider those. Megazeli, um, your organization, of course, also pays special attention uh, to the appointment process of judges in South Africa regarding matters of transparency, of governance, and um, uh, things such as that. And uh, looking at what's currently happening, uh, not just this case, but also yesterday, the JSC starting with interviews uh, for shortlisted candidates available for judicial posts. Um, as someone who uh, watches these things very closely, how would you say, uh, you know, this process, how would you assess the process firstly and where do you think it could be improved upon? Well, I think uh, the, the process is, is, a, is an important process. Um, it's not, uh, in the past, we never had a, an opportunity as the public to see how judges were appointed. Um, Pre-1994, the Minister of Justice was the only person who was involved in the appointment of judges, which is why you found sometimes um, judges who would be leaning towards a, a certain political party, particularly the National Party, um, they were appointed as judges and, and others who opposed uh, apartheid, for example, were never appointed as judges. So, so we moved from that past to the present now where we hold public interviews where the public uh, can, can sit and watch, the media is present, and there is a, a body that is constituted by different parts of the legal profession, including members of parliament, uh, who sit and, and interview uh, 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 candidates um, on, on a number of issues to test their fitness uh, to be judges. Where the process can be improved is in terms of the criteria uh, that the JSC uses to, uh, to assess the fitness of the candidates. It, it is very difficult to, to tell what exactly the JSC is looking for in a candidate. You'll sometimes find that a particular candidate will be asked certain questions about their, their experience, about their knowledge of the law, about their, uh, uh, the judgments that they've written. And then you'll find other candidates who are asked a few questions on issues that sometimes do not necessarily relate to the, the role of a judge. And so and we, are, we are quite concerned about that because it, it shows a certain level of unfairness. It, 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 it's very, it makes it very hard and it invites criticism uh, of the JSC that they are not being fair on all candidates. They are, they are, they are not um, uh, following um, the, 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 the assessing the fitness of the candidates in a fair, in a fair manner so that um, everyone is satisfied that only the best people are appointed. Advocate Breitenbach, your response to that same question? Well, um, I agree with um, Mbikazeli that it's, uh, that's, it's, a, it's a very transparent process, which is something uh, that should be lauded. Uh, it's a new and, and trans it's a very rigorous, thorough process. And uh, believe me, the interviews are, are, are rigorous. It's difficult. Um, you know, some of the interviews uh, are last for a long time. They're tiring. Um, and the candidates are really put through the ringer. Um, so much so that uh, sometimes commissioners remark that they're surprised anybody actually comes. 
so, so yes, it's difficult to, when you're trying to assess somebody who you don't know at all, um, based only on information that's been gathered by various, from various sources, um, to, to have a, a consistent uh, line of questioning for everybody. Bearing in mind that the JC is quite big, um, people from very different um, areas are, are sitting on the JC and have different interests in, in what they wish to ascertain. So the, the questions are not uh, consistent, I agree. Uh, however, you need to assess each individual as they sit before you, which, um, which, is, which makes it difficult to be consistent. Um, and also, some of the candidates have been there two or three times before. And so, you know, you've canvassed certain areas with them already and you know what those answers are. There are perhaps new issues that need to be canvassed that may make it seem like their interviews are much shorter than other people's. But, you know, if you bear in mind the information garnered from the two or three previous encounters, then, then that may not be the case. So, it's an assessment of individuals. It's, uh, it's, it is difficult. Um, each, each commissioner has an idea of what they're looking for in a judge and, and they base their questions on that. Uh, uh, however, any, any constructive criticism should be welcomed and, um, and perhaps it's something that we can look at. Perhaps it's something that we can revisit the questioning, um, the interview process of, of judges to try and make it more consistent. Um, but but in, in, uh, in its favour, I do think that it's very, very rigorous. Uh, and therefore very effective, and, and as uh, because he says, it's very, very transparent. Everybody can watch. Uh, everybody in South Africa knows what they're getting at the end of this process. So in all, I think it's not a bad process. So we're wrapping the interview. We have about two minutes. And uh, just a final question to both of you regarding... Um, the whole notion of state capture, and we're dealing with that as a country, but what about judicial capture um, possibility? Is there something to that or not? And uh, I'd love for both of you to just expand on that. Um, uh, let me start with you, Mbegezil. Uh, so, you know, the judges are human beings, and judges live within uh, the society that we all live in, um, we expect that they will act with the utmost integrity. Um, they will always be honest at, at, at all times. Um, so, but at the same time, because they are human beings, we can't 100% rule out that there would be instances of uh, uh, judicial capture, of, of people offering bribes to, to judges. We, we can't rule that, that out 100%. But what we've so far seen uh, is that judges have acted with integrity, uh, which is which is really uh, we are grateful for as a country. Um, they have entered, acted with integrity. Um, the the chief justice, the deputy chief justice, has called for anyone with any evidence of any bribe or form of corruption that has been offered to judges. No one so far has 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 come forward, and and I would also echo their call to say anyone who has any such evidence should come forward. But so far, there hasn't, hasn't been any. Um, but that does not mean that we shouldn't keep our eye on the judiciary. We should keep our focus on them. Uh, but so far, they have um, uh, honored their oath of office to, to serve the public with integrity. Advocate Breitenbach? Um, thank you. I largely agree with because they leave judges are human uh, and they certainly can make mistakes and they uh, are not perfect. However, I think the South African judiciary has conducted himself with, uh, with absolute uh, integrity. I think uh, in many difficult circumstances, they've been our saving grace. Um, more recently, um, Mr. Mufamadi made uh, uh, gave evidence in front of the Zonda Commission about um, a thing called Project Justice at State Security, uh, where uh, money was allegedly set aside for the possible bribing of members of the judiciary. Uh, that evidence is not concrete evidence. It's a, it's a suggestion uh, and it remains allegations. There, there is no direct evidence of a judge being bribed. There have been calls for people with uh, information, evidence uh, of that happening to come forward. As Mbibizeli says, no one has done so. Um, the DA has called for uh, President Ramaphosa to appoint a retired judge of whom there are many who are very capable of dealing with that matter to to uh, investigate this allegation. It is tr troublesome, it's worrying. Um, nobody wants to think that judges have been bribed. 
So I sincerely hope the president will give consideration to appointing a judge, to a retired judge, to investigate these suggestions. Uh, but as Mbeki Zeli says, uh, there is no direct evidence of it, and our judiciary remains, in my view, strong and has acted with integrity. Well, thank you so much, um, Mbegezeli Benjamin, Research and Advocacy uh, Officer from Judges Matter, and uh, Glynis Breitenbach, a member of the JSC, as well as DA Member of Parliament on matters relating to the Judicial Service Commission. And uh, that's where we're going to leave that for now. It's 7 o'clock, Leanne.